singing how you do it. This is, uh, this is the quote that, uh, that Hart, Hart found out, and it's, uh, it says, Out of suffering and remorse, some of the strongest souls, the most massive characters, are scared with stars. You think it's true? He thinks it's true. Uh, Click. I make you love to my wife. I hope she's logged in. Click. 
I'm holding my daughter over a Skype conference call while she's crying in the crib in the next room. Click. So when my phone goes off on my hip, I touch and I touch and I touch because in a world where there are voices that are only read, the laughter is never heard. I'm so desperate to feel that I hope the technology can reverse the universe of a screen can touch me back. And maybe it will when our technology is advanced enough to make us human again. <laughs> Um, what is your, uh, what's your takeaway of that? That's a pretty incredible writer. <laughs> um, so, obviously, it goes without saying, I think, with the obvious takeaway of the trip. Uh, don't forget that face to face is critical. That's important. And if you want to be better in this business, the more actual interactions, the more engaged you are, uh, the better you can be. I was talking to, uh, actually, Ann a few minutes ago. We had a, uh, my wife and I were, went to Swanee this weekend. And I just got news yesterday that a professor uh, passed away, and I was actually with him two days ago. And it was it was sort of heart wrenching because I pulled up to park to go to breakfast, and I saw this older man with cane, and he very kindly looked up and I said, "Ah, it's you know Dr. Hiller, it's that good year." And he said, uh, "I would let you help me," <laughs> in a very sort of genuine old man way. And uh, and we helped him to his car and 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 had a nice conversation. But Ann mentioned he was always just so engaged and so present in the moment. And even that little bit, which I don't know what happened after that, but he went home and, and was found dead the next morning. And so uh, obviously there's, you know, you wish you would have done something differently, but, but there was a moment of connection and you can't do that with anything except for face to face. So I would just challenge all of you all to to, to be with the people that, that matter a lot to you and spend time with people who maybe don't matter as much to you yet, but, but could someday. It makes a big difference. Um, some education coming up. We've got a uh, book town class today after the sales meeting. There's a broker open house, uh, which we'll show you later, uh, some info on that, in Germantown and Salem Town. And then tomorrow there's a Franklin sales meeting and then there's a, uh, a V Market class in Franklin that Chris and Caitlin are teaching. And then there's an orientation on uh, Friday, or I'm sorry, on Thursday here at 21st. I believe that's the 21st. And then Menti Monday, if you're a mentor or a mentee, please come Menti Monday at 10 a.m. And then the Great National Realtors Convention is on the uh, 24th. Anybody signed up for that? <laughs> All right, so you get some award points uh, for your awards of excellence if you want to go to that. And if you, uh, if you need help signing up, just go to greatnationalrealtors.org. There's a village cook-off. We got a fall cook-off. We did this a few months ago. Who came a few months ago? Was that not like the most fun day ever? I loved it. Uh, so we'll have yard games, barbecue, Dave Norris and Tony Myers uh, did some impressive cooking last uh, last time in the summer. Who's the, who's, who, David Payne, you're going to bartend? I just said David, where's David? I've been told that I am. Oh, David, David Payne has been told that you're bartending. I'm going to tell you again, David. We are so thankful for your bartending skills. <laughs> if you haven't met David Payne cocktail, you got to come. Uh, so Mark Calendar's Friday, September 27th. That's not this Friday, but next Friday. So in about 11 days, uh, the 21st office. Ninja, there's a few slots left uh, from, what I, from what I understand. September 30th to October 3rd. So that's coming up in a week and a half, two weeks. And Hunter. <laughs> I kept this photo. I love it. Right. So what's going on? So Warren Buffett. Um, Y'all know Warren Buffett, right? That the eighty-two billion dollar was worth eighty-two billion dollars. That is eighty-two thousand millions, right? <laughs> oh, so he has. Um, he had something called. He has something called that twenty-five five rule that I came across last week, which. But before we get to that, he has some he has some great quotes. He's like a folksy. I mean, if you hadn't read some of it, he has these annual letters that come out, and you ought to just you can download and just search Warren Buffett annual or Berkshire Hathaway annual letter and just read them, and you'll, it'll be like getting an MBA in a five-page document. But some of my favorite quotes from him. Uh, 
we're simply we, we simply attempt to be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. That's a good one. Like so, right now, what do you think he is? Fearful. Probably a little fearful. You know? and he's, he's kind of mixed. He's, he thinks there's a lot of cash on the sidelines, and, and so he doesn't feel a lot too fearful at this point, but he's also not, not greedy. Um, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Someone's sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. This is a great one. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. <laughs> risk comes from not knowing what you do. It is risky. He's huge on uh, reputation. Like he's just known for being a straight shooter. He does all his deals uh, with a handshake, and he's about when he's buying someone's company, and he always says it takes 20 years to build a reputation, five minutes to ruin it. And if you think about that, you'll do things differently. Another thing he said, um, he talks to his manager. So now he basically runs a conglomerate, basically a big mutual fund, but he owns all these companies. And he says, if you lose money for the firm, I will be understanding. But if you lose a shred of rep- reputation for the firm, I will be ruthless. Our favorite holding period is forever. He's a real long-term thinker. He's just awesome. You ought to, you ought to read up one more about it. There's a great, uh, there's a great book uh, about him called The Snowball. I read it a few years ago. So. Okay, so basically, um, his uh, 25 rule, his uh, pilot was asking for career advice, and so Buffett said, tells him, "Hey, create a list of 25 career goals that you want to do." So his pilot. Getting some feedback from Warren Buffett. He goes and makes his list of 25 things to do that he wants to accomplish in his career. And so Buffett says, Oh, you got your list of 25. Circle your top five you want to do. And so he does that. And then instead of saying, like, hey, combine these and do these together, Buffett tells him, All right, you you cannot, you need to focus totally on these five, and you cannot do anything for from the, the ones six through twenty-five. And basically, the, the gist of it is um, focus, right? And so, um, but basically, um, the gist of it is focus and how the, the twenty, the six through twenty-five can really take away from what we really want to get done. And so, we can apply that in our daily habits. If you have 10 things, you want to make a list of 10 things you can do in the morning that you really want to accomplish for the day, start with the top task or two tasks and make sure you get all of those done before you focus on the other eight. Same thing for the week. You go into the week and have 10 things you want to get done, circle two or three, and make those a priority. So anyway, I thought that was a good thing um, as we talk about goals and how to get more done. Um, he has 82,000 millions. He knows what he's doing. All right, so other news. Have y'all heard about a Saudi oil attack? Just happened like over the weekend. It's like big deal. Um, so Persian Gulf, Iran, Saudi Arabia, you know, the region. Saudi Arabia is, is huge. So is Iran. Ten drones disrupted half of the Saudi's oil output. And which is five percent of the world's output. So it's like a like a big oil prices spike. It's a big big news story. Um, they were uh, drones. You know, they're once the uh, kind of exclusive uh, tool of advanced militaries. Not so much now. So it was like a twenty thousand dollar drone. Ten of them caused that much damage. Kind of scary. Um, the Iranian backed. Houthi, Houthi militia claimed responsibility, but there's most people believe that the Iranian uh, government had something to do with it. But the, the really scary part, each drone, $20,000, produced about $456 million in lost revenue, which would be, I mean, look at that return. If you're really looking for how to um, impact terror in the world just for $20,000. So anyway. Thought you should know what's what's going on and and uh, and um, something to be aware of in the world. Good news. Um, so this is you don't know what this line is. Back to the economy. It is the 
average FICA score for um, the average person in the, in the U.S. So this is from 2005 to present day, and it's reached its all-time high of 706. FICA scores range from 300 to 850. It's a really important part of our business, how to get financing. So, you know, a decade of, uh, of good, steady economic growth in the, uh, the consumer in the U.S. is uh, doing well. Other good news, um, kind of related, median household income surpassed 63,000. Y'all know the difference between the median and the average and the mean and the mode? I don't remember that. Much. All right, what's the median? The middle value. So if you have like 100 different values, the 50th one, the one that has you know, the same number on both sides, that's your, that's your median. Which could be different from the average. The average, you just take the total and divide by the number of mountain, right? So you could get, if you had some outliers, something that was like really high or really low, that could skew the average and the median kind of gives you a little more of a middle. And then the mode is the most, yeah, the most, the most repeated number um, in that whole array of numbers. So. <laughs> oh! <laughs> The U.S. poverty rate also fell to 11.8, its lowest level since 2001. That's good news. Um, poverty rate is like, it's a census data point. Um, I believe the, for a two-person house, a three-person household, it's uh, $20,000 a year in income. And like a four-person household is around 25, so it kind of varies based on your size of household, but that's kind of generally where it is. Really good news on the employment front. Um, Amazon announced it has 30,000 open positions. GPS is hiring 100,000 seasonal workers. Uber is hiring another 2,000 to work on their freight division. I guess they're going to start a trucking, on demand trucking company. Smile Direct Club, we talked about that last week. You know, there's a pending IPO. We're going to have three more. Uh, at least two more uh, billionaires. And this guy must have known what was going to happen. <laughs> Biggest flop in decades. <laughs> so they basically they went public around uh, 23 and it closed down 27.5%. It's kind of crept back up. It's not really that bad for them because they basically sold to you know investors at a price of 23. So actually, they actually did, as a company, did really well, raised a lot of money. It's the investors and the investment banks that that did the deal that are now underwater on it. So, so they should be smiling. They're right. Still good. All right, last thing. <coughs> Who knows the largest bank in Nashville in terms of uh, amount of deposits? Local bank. Quarter or local bank. Pinnacle. All right, so we're going to do a little, uh, yeah, Pinnacle, <clears throat> top the ranking with the highest market share. Here is the top 12, Pinnacle, Bank of America. I thought there were some surprises in here. Um, and then this number is like what they did year over year in terms of growth. So Pinnacle grew their deposits 10.1%, Bank of America did Regions kind of flat. SunTrust losing some market share, drop down. They used to be number one, like in national era, the big them and uh, Regions, which was First American. They bought First American, so those were you know one and two uh, back 25 years ago or whatever. Uh, First Tennessee is is growing. Uh, Franklin Synergy, while well, it's pretty high, uh, lost 7.4. I thought Capstar is a startup. They're growing quickly. That was interesting. Tony Myers, Wilson. Thank you, trust, growing strong. And then, so, which bank is missing out of this? It's like locally pretty strong. Renaissance, not in studio, is not big enough yet, but that would be Avenue. Wells Fargo. Down 27.2% deposits. 
they had some local management changes apparently and um, also you know the whole national thing going on. <laughs> You know, open up the bank accounts in your name, you know, that'll hurt your market share. So there's two, there's two um, major players who are coming to National and have both said we plan on being in the top five in the next uh, five years. JP Morgan Chase, and this one's tougher, but they're pretty big in other places. PNC. Wow, y'all are good. All right, I think that's it for me. All right, how's the market? What are you seeing? Things going well? Getting offers? Not getting offers? Writing offers? Who wrote an offer in the last week? We got one. That's good. Um, all right, so rates. Anybody did the rates? They did what? Rates go up or down this week? They went up a little bit. Actually, went up a lot over the last few weeks. So a quarter point from four weeks, or from three weeks ago, 3.75 in the 30 year fix, I'm sorry, that's the five on arm. 30 year fix went up from 3.625 to 4%. It's a pretty big jump. So this is what it looks like again over the last couple of years, since January of 2017. So we had a low point in the fall of 2017 when 30 year fixed rate loans were about, you know, 3.65, give or take. And then they went up, 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 all the way up to about almost 5%. And then they kind of jumped around here and are now at 4%. Ignore that, sorry, I forgot to update this. Those are the real numbers 4%, 3.65, and 4%. Cool. All right, we talked about this last week, so I'm not going to go through it again. But who posted this on social media? Good. If you didn't, you can still, still do that. It's a great way to just uh, show something that's out there and spur a little conversation among your, your people. And then you can have some face-to-face -face interactions with them. Foreclosures, so, so I did a little research on foreclosures just to see, you know, is there, are there any patterns? Uh, this is kind of interesting. So there's a, there's a stat that looks at the first half of the year. I'm not sure why it's the first half of the year, but this is the data that was coming up. And so January to June, foreclosure activity. So properties with foreclosure filings. A foreclosure filing is a default notice, uh, a schedule option, or a bank repossession. And in, um, <coughs> so if you look at the, 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 this is 2008 all the way to 2019, so 296,000 foreclosures filed in the first half of 2019, which sounds astronomical, but it's quite a bit different than the one and a half million that were filed in 2010, right? So the foreclosure filings in the first half of the year have gone down steadily. So the, uh, the article said mid-year mid -year 2019 foreclosure market report showed a total of, again, 296,000 U.S. properties with foreclosure filings in the first six months, which is down 18% from the same period a year ago and down 82% from the peak of the 1.6 million in the first six months of 2010. But interestingly, counter to the national trend, 36 of the 22 metropolitan statistical areas, so that's MSA, so the national MSA is Nashville, Franklin, and Murfreesboro, Right, so those are big, big picture metro areas. Posted a year over year increase in foreclosure activity in the first six months of 2019, including, what do you notice? Is there a pattern here that you notice? Maybe a particular state? <laughs> Four out of the top five are what state? Florida. Florida. Have y'all ever seen the, uh, the memes, the Florida Man news yes. memes? Yeah. If you, you know what I'm talking about, just Google Florida Man. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> Buffalo, New York, uh, Orlando, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, Miami, Florida, and Tampa, uh, St. Pete, St. Petersburg, Florida. Up 5%, 7%, 18%, 32%, 33%. Um, the mid year, this is a quote from the guy that uh, the reporter, mid year 2019 foreclosure activity helps slow, show an overall view on how foreclosure activity is trending downward. Of course, you still have pockets across the nation where foreclosure activity seems some flare ups. Foreclosure starts is a good indication of markets to watch. For instance, and look at the largest metro. Largest markets across the nation with the greatest annual increase in foreclosure starts, four out of five markets were in Florida. Uh, so this just gives you an overview. And this is a, um, uh, a heat map of foreclosure starts by MSA. And so some of these markets were, um, and I think this is a percentage increase, maybe, or no, I'm sorry, this is total, right? So not percentage increase. So the Atlanta market is going to have more than some of the smaller markets in Florida in total, but that's also a much bigger population. So it's not, this is not really the best 
map tool that got necessarily for that. Um, but you see, you know, obviously, you know, the New York area, you're gonna have a lot of people, Chicago, uh, Southern California, but that's a high population rate. This was interesting too. They average days to complete a foreclosure. I didn't, I never knew how long it would take to complete a foreclosure, but you know, the, the average days right now is a, almost, it's like 700 and some odd days. That's crazy. I thought it was just, it was like 90 days, no payments, then back comes and they take about to sell it. Does anybody work in the foreclosure market at all? Seth does. So is that, you see that? That's normal with you? Yeah, it takes forever. It takes forever. Uh, and it's been taking longer, so it, it's it's slowing down a little bit, but not like the good old days of 2007 where you can foreclose in six months. Well, they put new restrictions in on it since the last Yeah, there's a whole robo signing thing that was sort of found upon, so. Uh, all right, so tools, any questions on that? Market wise? So pay attention to Florida, you know, I don't think foreclosure, I don't think that's terrible news. Overall nationwide foreclosures are down, but Florida's one of those markets that uh, tends to have people doing sometimes radical things. And if they start doing radical things and they can't pay their mortgage, it might be interesting to watch. Uh, low low, so we had our first low low get to go out. Uh, if you haven't signed up, I know there wasn't a huge time, but now you've got a month before the next one, so sign up. All you have to do is look for the email that went out two Fridays ago, and uh, then it was resent out. It's got an individual link for you to sign up, and then if you have a uh, the the uh, paid Boomtown account, you can use the tags inside of Boomtown. I'm not sure if that's fully operational yet, uh, but I'll check with Chris on that. And then otherwise, you can just upload a spreadsheet. It's super easy. If you need help, uh, we'll do it. I'm going to try to do a class on that. Probably not sometime in the next couple of weeks, depending on when when the schedule allows. Uh, let's see here, tip of the week, all right. We talk about habits. So Hunter was talking about habits, and this is really, you know, everybody knows we should have good habits and, and, and not have bad habits. And I just want to talk a little bit more about that. And I also want to talk about just some practical how-tos of habit building. So there's a really cool video. Anybody, uh, I'm not a sports guy. My wife said I don't know much about sports. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but I do know who, who this guy is. Anybody know who Steph Curry is? Basketball player, right? So, uh, he was not a, he was not a household name a long time ago, you know, not that long ago, uh, relatively speaking. This is a video of a, of a speech that was given uh, by a coach about him, and so it's a little hard to hear. But watch this. One of the things that's pretty cool. They show all these shots of him doing all these things in practice, and then they'll show him literally like doing the exact same moves in games. It's this practice, this practice, 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 and the consistency of it uh, that makes him powerful. But take a look. Several years ago, I had the great honor of working the first ever Kobe Bryant Nike Skills Academy. Nike invited the top 20 high school shooting guards and the top 10 college shooting guards in the country to this camp with Kobe. And it's kind of funny now that I look back on it, how many of those players are now household names in the NBA. However, at that time, the least recognized player there was Stephen Curry. But I knew immediately that he was the most impressive long-term, he's going to be a future NBA superstar. And here's how I knew that. It was all because of his work habits. Now, those skills academies, we would have two workouts a day for three straight days. 30 minutes before every single workout, most players would show their flip-flops and have on their headphones. And Seth Curry had already started doing some form shooting. He had already started taking game shots, game spots, and games. By the time the workout officially started, he had probably already made 100, 150 shots. A full sweat. When the workout actually started, he was meticulous. With everything that he did, he made sure that he had perfect footwork. He made sure that he had perfect shooting form. If he did anything that wasn't perfect, he did it over again. And he didn't need a coach to tell him, he just did. And then probably the most impressive thing that he did was as soon as that workout was over, he would not leave the court until he switched, switched five free throws in a row. You know how hard that is? That's the level of excellence that he holds himself to. And, and the moral of that story is that success is not an accident. <coughs> success is actually a choice. And Stephen Curry is one of the best shooters on the planet today because he has made the choice to create great habits. And my question to you is, are the habits that you have today on par with the dreams that you have for tomorrow? That's something that you need to ask yourself every single day. Because whatever you do on a regular basis today will determine 
You have a responsibility to do certain things. You're taking ownership of that, and you're making those, to Hunter's point, you're making those your priorities. This is cool too. You don't need more how-tos. You need something to make the how-tos work for you. Right? We're always looking for the next best thing. How do you do that? How do you sell so many houses? How do you, you know, get that listing? How do you do this? Right? There's no, there really is no secret ingredient to that. It's consistency. And so we don't need to, we don't need more how-tos. We just need to figure out what our own how-tos are and how to make them work for us. And this is a cool thing too. So taking responsibility of liberation. I had an expression as a little little kid that I always said to myself, and because uh, you know we we got in trouble and we either lied or thought about lying and it never goes anywhere good. Uh, and so you know you do that a few times as a little kid and you're like ah I got in trouble. And so I always had this internal thought that it said uh, when in doubt tell the truth. <laughs> if you're ever in doubt, just tell the truth. It usually ends better. <laughs> so. so um, because taking responsibility is something that liberates you. If you if you own what you did or what you didn't do, it gives you the freedom. So some questions to ponder as you think about things. What is your philosophy? What is your life philosophy? Do you have an entitled attitude or a value-driven attitude? And when you seek learn new information, skills, tools, do you just enjoy how it makes you feel in the moment, or do you actually practice those new skills? I would challenge each of you to try to practice something every day that that you don't feel like you're a master at. And sometimes that's hard to do in the real estate business, right? Because we're used to having clients uh, to interact with. So maybe you get a partner, maybe you do it in the mirror. I don't know, whatever makes you comfortable. But try practicing. <laughs> uh, this, anybody ever read the book, Thank You, Grow Rich? It's an oldie, 1937. There's one quality, this is the point here, there's one quality which one must possess to win, and that is the definiteness of purpose, the knowledge of what one wants, and a burning desire to possess it. And so in that, uh, book he talks about persistence over and over again he interviews all these mega at the time millionaires now they'd be billionaires and the one thing the one pattern that every single one of them have in common is persistence it's doing the same consistent things over and over and over and over again even when they get turned down even when they get uh you know run into a wall they just keep those same habits and actions going and they persist through the pain of it persistence is following that burning desire and consistently doing the activities to take you there it's a huge thing of the book uh, it's the same thing as the slight edge, right? Small decisions done consistently over time lead to major results down the road. They're easy to do, but also easy not to do. So one little trick. Anybody have any tricks for how to build new habits? Start. Start. It's a good one. Um, right? Easy to do, easy not to do. So this was a, this was a, 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 a trick that I learned in another book. Was forming habits by doing little easy to do, also easy not to do things consistently, to be most effective, do them after a habit. So conjoining them with another habit, right? So doing something automatically. I'm not going to ask you if you don't brush your teeth. I'm just going to assume that everybody brushes their teeth every day, okay? So if you don't, then I'm not trying to make fun of you, but you should probably brush your teeth. Uh, so we all brush our teeth either every night or in the morning or whenever, right? It's just one of those things that you just do. So try combining a habit with that. So if you want to, let's say you want to start doing push-ups, right? All right. Oh, I don't have time to do push-ups. I need to do some push-ups. Well, tell yourself after this. After I blank, I will blank. For example, after I brush my teeth, I'm going to do five push-ups. It's just five. It's not that big of a deal. It's just five push-ups. After I turn out the lights, I'll think of something I'm grateful for. Start your habit creating activities small and grow them at the time. So the next day it could be after I brush my teeth, I'm doing six push-ups. After I brush my teeth, I'm doing seven. And you're building that up little by little. And then it becomes associated with that habit, and you're retraining your brain and your mind and your body to associate something new with something that you already do, and it becomes a lot easier uh, to do things. And you almost trick yourself into becoming habitual about something new without even really realizing it by ramping it up that way. <clears throat> it's a pretty cool uh, thing. I changed the brush my teeth. I think in the book it said, after I pee, I'll do three push-ups. But I thought that was a little weird in the bathroom. So I don't know. Just Make sure you're still in the bathroom brushing teeth. I thought that was a little bit better. I still had to say it. I still had to say it. I need to make that happen. Don't want to waste it on your mind. All right, start your habit creating to be small, grow them with time. Plant, cultivate, harvest. Uh, the key ingredient is cultivate. You can't, uh, you can uh, only, I guess, without starting to write, only, uh, you, that can only happen over the course of time. All right, any questions, thoughts on that? Cool. All right.
Coming soon, broker open. There's broker open today in Germantown. There are five properties that are going to be on the market from 11 to 1. 707 Buchanan in Salem Town, or 607 Coffee Street, so that's Jennifer Ray, JC and Sarah Connolly, uh, 1816 7th Avenue North by Kristen Koch. And we also have uh, uh, Lee London at the Parks, who's doing 1808 7th Avenue North, and then Will Parker, who's got 1822 9th Avenue North. So these are all, I think, in about the same price range 550, 44, 499, 449, 559. So, if you want lunch, you want to go to all five of them, go support your friends, and uh, do that. Any other broker open houses we have coming up? All right. Hang on one second, I gotta get my consumer stuff. All right, who's got it coming soon? <clears throat> Crystal Morgan. You know what I'm talking about? Hotel, uh, high rise, and then office. 
So 196 condominiums, 400 feet above Nashville, the converters are one way, and then you'll get the first to know. One, one thing that I think is cool, so we're, we're basically rolling out a six week plan to give any agent that wants it tools, unbranded, you can brand them to you, to go out and help find buyers. And we, uh, I say we, Brian has been testing this out with Silo Ben, it's a phenomenal success. So Jay Griffin here, I saw this post the other day and it made me proud. It said, the sun is setting over another day of construction progress at Silo Ben, the most recent development with over 100 condos, townhomes pre-sold, with over 100 condos and townhomes pre-sold. If you missed out on phase one or are still looking for a great pre-sale offer, investment opportunity, let me know there's more to come. All the hashtags. Uh, so he didn't take those photos, those were provided to him, uh, probably with a copy as well. And he's using that, it makes it easy. And it makes it sound like he's a part of it, which is great. Do you know how many of these things he sold? How many of these he sold? 24. 24. 24 of these. I'm gonna say that again, he sold 24. He's not, he's not on the team. He's not on the team. Okay. So you wanna talk about income per hour? That's insane. So we're trying to take that, that model and basically create a six week campaign. Uh, so it's not just a, hey, this is what you know the listing agent is doing, this is what the developer is doing, but basically give it to agents as a way to help give you content to go out and uh, find buyers for it. So we're going to talk more about it at the first sale meeting in October. Uh, we don't have one next week, but after that, we'll, uh, I said 20 buyers, I should say 24 buyers. So pick up your own 24 buyers. All right, anything else? What are we going to take away today? You like that? 24 buyers. Go get your own. All right. So using content and and helping to uh, Help them to embrace it and, and go find buyers with it. What else? Takeaways. Consistency habits. habits. Practice. Practice. Not practicing on your clients. Persistence. Persistence. Face to face. Face to face. Push ups after you brush your teeth. Push ups after you brush your teeth. Anything else? Top five goals of the list of 25. Top five out of the list of 25. That was pretty cool. Take your life goals and then. So you're in top five and just basically ignore the rest. Go to them after you finish the top five, because to those top five first. Yeah. It's the power of focus, right? Which we all start with, I'm no exception. So after this, we're gonna do a Boomtown introduction. It's gonna be a, a, a basic level class. So if, you, if you're familiar with Boomtown, we're probably gonna start, we're probably gonna talk about stuff that you already know about, but if you have been wanting to get into it and figure out what to do and how to get started, and, what to know and what to pay attention to and you know, what the top five things to pay attention to are. We're gonna talk about that stuff. So stick around, we're gonna start that in about 20 minutes, 10 30. And until then, if you wanna to go to the broker open, go get some lunch, go to Germantown. You should have gotten an email about those, but it's also in the village calendar. Thank you all for having a good sales meeting. Y'all enjoy your day.